The first time I met Zero, he was biting off a fellow prisoner's ear. Guards never intervened. That would spoil their fun. Normally at this point, inmates would be placing wagers on who'd be victorious, but the winner of this raw brawl, a dead cert. Their stakes laid on what body parts of the loser would be missing afterwards. The name Zero, given to those with no registration, vagrants that lived on the colony's fringe. Probably a construction worker's illegal birth. It happens. Only those with proper documentation are allowed to procreate. No place for loafers or low IQs in artilleryman's brave new world. My escorts introduced me to my new cellmate as he continued to pound the mashed face of his unconscious victim laying on the cracked canteen floor, blood mixed with slop from overturned ration trays. Scavengers scooped up rich pickings from the tiles. Make no mistake, you take what you can grab in jail. You're a fool if you don't, and it doesn't take long once you're incarcerated to become that way inclined. I've learned that there are three types of friends you make in life. Those first in childhood, when you're innocent, free from envy, greed, and the biological urge to fuck. When a friendship doesn't have an alternative agenda for gain. The second is an unbreakable bond that comes from fighting with comrades on the battlefield. Included in this second category is also your prison cell companion. The third form of friendship is everyone else and doesn't count for shit. I immediately approached without showing fear. I'm George, offered my hand, much to the amusement of the geeing spectators. Entertainment in short supply behind bars. Normally it's the weakest inmate that is hounded and humiliated, but here was I, putting myself forward. Zero grunted, didn't look up, continued working over his defeated opponent. My outstretched hand remained hanging. Don't make me bend down to your cesspool level and yank you up by your ugly chops. This caught his attention. Nobody had the nerve to speak to Zero that way, not even the guards. He stopped bashing, rose to his full height, towered above me by a good foot and a half, a pillar of solid muscle his body heaving heavily from the exertion of swinging those huge mechanical pistons he called arms, stared at me for a time, unclear if he'd been clouted on the head during the fight and I was merely a figment of his dazed imagination. He porked me. The motionless beaten soul under Zero's straddle gurgled bubbles of blood. I won't ask a third time, I said. Nobody had ever seen Zero smile. I'm not even sure his facial muscles could perform such a task. The corners of his mouth snarled in my direction. The mess hall's rabble waited for his reaction. The world froze, eyed me up. I wasn't like any of the others here, and he knew it. Wiped his stained red knuckles across his wide chest before presenting them to me. Zero, nice to meet you. More surprised at his gentleman's response than he'd been from my bold interruption. Holding back his full strength, he squeezed my fingers. He could have crushed every bone if he so wished. I knew what his intentions were. I buckled, pretending to be in crippling pain. The convicts broke their silence, began applauding. Zero couldn't be shown to be soft in front of the motley population. My act must have been truly convincing because at one point he actually lightened his grip. I laid squirming on the floor, doubled over, nursing my hand. Show's over, the guards announced, sparked their electric coiled whips. The end of each spring loaded cat delivered an agonizing shock. A full and deliberate high voltage dose would kill a man. Guards don't repeat orders. You weren't warned twice. You weren't warned, period. The rowdy mob reluctantly dispersed at a speed that showed compliance and no more. 